Navy versus Notre Dame, the preview, right? The game is getting ready to come up here this weekend. We're going to be calling this game, obviously. Live! So, this is, Chris, this is the 96th meeting of these two teams, right? And it's yeah. in Ireland, Aviva Stadium, right? Notre Dame is going to look to Sam Hartman and second-year coach Marcus Freeman to take the Fighting Irish to new levels. I think a lot of Notre Dame fans have kind of felt that they were a quarterback away from success, right? And also, a lot of fans with the loss of Tommy Reese, and we kind of touched on him, Sam Hartman there, they feel this is their year, too. I mean, and I can kind of see why some of this hype is getting built up over there in South Bend. Yeah, I uh, – here's the thing. Notre Dame leads that series, though, like 81-13-1 and or some crazy – crazy 90% winning percentage over Navy, but it's cool. It's a historic thing. It's, it's been around for, for forever. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I've been on air and said this about Notre Dame this year. I think I've even maybe got you on board a little bit at Christian about the Notre Dame hype man. nobody talks about them, even the Notre Dame man, which is kind of crazy. I mean, Notre Dame is a very popular team. There's a lot of Nebraska uh, people here that are Notre Dame fans, trust me, take it, take it, take take my word for it. Um, I, I think Notre Dame this year with Sam Hartman coming over, ACC's all-time leading touchdown passer. He seems like he's been rut Christian, been around for like 20 years, coming over this year. They have to be better in offense. They've always been able to run the ball. They put out great tight ends, good running backs, offensive linemen. Their defense has always been, you know, top 30 every freaking year. Um, since I can remember, they they should be really good. Sam Hartwell can throw the football. I mean, the kid the kid's been around the game, like I said, forever. Um, I, I don't see how Notre Dame even honestly, personally, that this game's even close. And I'm going to talk about Navy here, C Christian. I'll let you 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 extrapolate on them real quick. But Brian Newberry, they got rid of their their yeah. old head coach. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But he's been there forever. Newberry was their defensive coordinator. Yeah. Navy played these guys, what, within a couple points last year. It was a tough, tough game at the end of the year. Yeah. But, you know, Freeman for Notre Dame, is this is his second year. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, uh, changing of the guard, if you will, with these two teams this year. You know, just new faces. I, I, I don't understand, though, how this game in Notre Dame with, with Hartman, even if he doesn't play great, that he's yeah. not an upgrade at quarterback from what they've had with Tyler Buckner, all the bullshit they yeah. had there the last couple of years. They they haven't had a good quarterback since I would say honestly, um, Ian Book was good. Yeah, and hell, I would even go back before him, and I cannot think of his name. It just dropped me off. Brady, the head. Brady Deshaun Quinn. Kaiser yeah. or Brady, Brady Quinn. Quinn? Yeah, Brady Quinn, the guy that looked like he was on steroids back there. It's it's been a while for Notre Dame. Sam Hartman is is that good. I think he is that good yeah. of a quarterback. I think he's going to help him out tremendously, throwing the ball, stretching the field. Um, I think he'll be fine there. So I, I don't know how this game ultimately ends up playing. It's interesting for both teams. Like I said, Christian, I'm gonna kick it back to you real quick. Freeman's on a second year. You know, they struggled out of the gate last year. Notre Dame did by they played, you know, they, they lost to Marshall. They played Ohio State pretty close. I think that score was like 21 to 10, which was kind of cool. And I think we'll di we'll dig into that a little bit here coming up. But Navy's been running option football since I was a kid, and I think they always will. How how does how does Newberry I think he's gonna have to throw the ball a little bit more? I think they're gonna have with the new the new rules, there's no chop blocking mm -hmm. at all this year, Christian. That was something I wanted to touch on too. Navy's yeah. one of those teams that's always run option football, army. Air Force, you know, the, the the military academies, those type of things. How does this, you know, square up for you as far as overall? And I want you to dig a little bit into the stats here, too, because I know you're going into that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm going to make it really simple, Chris. I think this is going to be a closer game than a lot of people probably on the outside looking into it for a couple reasons, right? Look, you touched on one of the rule changes, which is no chop blocks, but they also integrated uh, the new rule, you know, as far as the clock not stopping after first downs, right? So Navy is going to, they're going to come in, they're still going to run that triple option offense as a running team. It's going to benefit a team like Navy though, because they're going to be able to kind of run the clock down. They're going to be able to, you know, the best defense is just keeping the ball out of an elite offense's hands sometimes, right? Oh, so this is going to help Navy out. 
They're still going to run the triple option, right? They're going to try to take advantage of running that clock down. Here's the thing, right? The midshipmen bring in former Kennesaw State offensive coordinator Grant Chestnut. It's okay if you don't know who that is. They ran the triple option over at Kennesaw State down in Georgia. Here's the thing about Here's the thing about Grant Chestnut. He's going to add some more passing-centric plays in there. It's going to be a little different style of offense. He's going to put his own little flair in it. They're going to try to expand it a little bit, still do what they always do with the option, but they're going to look to try to throw it a little bit more. Like you touched on, Chris, Brian Newberry, he was their defensive coordinator last year, and I think he's going to get them back to winning. I don't know necessarily that's going to result in them winning this game, but last year's game, we bring that up, 35 to 32. At one point, by the way, did you know this? Notre Dame led 35 to 13. So, say that, that again. at one point of that game, Notre Dame led 35 to 13. Wow, I did not know that. And I follow a lot of college football. <laughs> wow. So, so, this brings me to a couple of big parts. The biggest, and, and I've got this written down here, Chris. The biggest question mark to me is you touched on it. Marcus Freeman going into his second year. There was a couple times last year where we can look at the Marshall game and some of these in, in this game as an example too, where it was it was a very interesting year for him, right? He obviously lost to uh, he obviously lost to Marshall. I mean, this is a weird game in Ireland. It's week one. What you know? It, it, this is going to be to me. This is going to be the prove it game for Marcus Freeman, right? This is going to be the game that sets the tone. Okay, I get last year. I think they started the season off against Ohio State. Tough way to tough way to yeah. kind of start the year off, right? They played them close though, super close. They 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 did. It was a good game. It was a close game, but this game is, and you know all about that, right? I mean, your team played in Ireland last year yeah, against a team yeah. that that a lot of people were saying, "Ah, there's no way they'll yeah, be." Yeah, one one game after the rest. Of the one game. one game yeah. after that, but they won the one game that you probably would want to win, I guess, as a Northwestern fan. So my main point is, Thanks, Kirk, you know, it. Yeah. I'm not trying to bring up old feelings here, man. I'm just saying. Right, I think that kind of brings us into a little bit of the final prediction for this game, Chris. What are your what are your final score on the game? My my thoughts on this, Christian. You bring up a lot of good points, though. Um, you, you said it best with 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 Freeman, right? I think he's. I mean, I like the guy a lot. I, he's a player's coach. If you haven't watched him, dude, he's a he's he's kind of weird watching Notre Dame with a coach that isn't Lou Holtz or Brian Kelly, who don't get very fired up on the sideline. Watch watch Freeman, dude. He's he's jumping up and down. Like I love the guy a lot. It's kind of odd watching Notre Dame have, as I have over the years or whatever. He's he's a player's coach. I love that. But this is his second year. We we obviously know that we got you know Newberry coming in, but he was a defensive coordinator. I think I think Navy is going to have to change up their offense. I think you're going to see him throw the ball more this year. But I do. Me and you, Chris, are going to have some different takes here. I think honestly from what I've seen so far on guys, by the way, we do not consult this before the show starts. Nope. I have this game going 38 to 13 in Notre Dame's favor. And I, I don't think that Navy is going to be able to move the ball with the new offense, a new quarterback and, and a majority of the offensive line is going to be able to move the ball week one against the Notre Dame defense. Notre Dame's defense has always been solid. I don't see anything changing there. Um, they returned 11 starters from last year overall. I don't I don't see that changing. They finished 9 and 4 last year Notre Dame did. Um they got a huge upgrade on offense with Sam Hartman. I just I, I think this game is close at halftime, but I think Notre Dame pulls a lot, excuse me, a lot. Pulls away quite a bit in the second half where this score looks probably worse than it probably actually was. That's just my prediction though. I think the spread Christian is what like 20 and a half. Right at twenty one yeah. currently, I think I hit the over or hit hit the spread here, but I, I do. I think it's a very close game. First half takes a little bit of time for both teams to fill each other out, but I just think Notre Dame's defense is is just far superior to Navy's, and I think their offense with Sam Hartman is just going to be better. That's my take. I want to hear yours on this. Yeah, I've got – so like I said, I think it's going to be a close game. I think the, the running clock is going to kind of affect it. I don't know if – you know, even though I think that uh, Notre Dame's offense will be a lot better this year with the loss of, uh, you know, Buckner and uh, Tommy Reese, yes. I think bringing in Sam Hartman, kind of freshening up the play calling a little bit, I think it'll kind of be a little bit – It'll be a little more refreshing for them. But I, I got them 31, Notre Dame, Navy 24. Like I said, I know a lot of the Notre Dame fans are going to be pissed off that it's even that close. Again, 
if this is kind of what we think it's going to be with Navy and they can kind of play play decent defense, right, and kind of, like Chris said, run the ball down their throat and just be able right. to convert on some of the passing when they need to, they got a chance, dude. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to win, but they got a chance to make it interesting. I think they could keep it close. thing with Navy, they're going to want to control the clock. You know what I mean? Keep yeah. Notre Dame's offense off the field. Can that happen? And I think it starts in the in the first quarter. If, if Notre Dame gets the ball, goes down and just torches them right away, Navy, when they get behind, it's very hard for them to try to keep up. That's that, well, that's yeah. the thing. But yeah. if, if, for example, you know Notre Dame does get the ball, and this is just hypothetically speaking here, I'm not saying that's how it's going to play out, but if they do, yeah. they stop them, get the ball, score, you know, and chew up a bunch of clock. This is one of these kind of weird football games, like NFL wise. You know what I mean? You see it in the NFL in the yeah. playoffs. Teams that predominantly run the ball, they want to chew up as much clock as they can. Navy's, like I said, I think they're going to throw the ball more than they have in the past. But this is very interesting because it is week one. And it, it's it, everybody looks like shit in week one most of the time. Most teams do. This is a very kind of, that's why, you know, it's kind of funny. This game last year was played late in the season. And it was that close. And Notre Dame looked really, really good at the end of the year um, oh. up until this game. So it, it's this kind of – that's why we're doing this game, guys, by the way, live. And if you guys uh, want to tune in, we're going to be, you know, talking some football. We'll take questions and stuff. But we're going to be doing this game live. We're, we're – both of us are very interested, even though this is not the um, biggest marquee matchup that we're going to do the entire year. But this is week yeah. zero, as they call it, Christian. And uh, I, I think it's going to be – Closer than people probably think, especially the first half.